So, you're thinking about using firewood to heat your house? Well, here's a few things you might want to consider. Hey there, outdoor YouTubers. So, you're thinking about burning wood to heat your house. And you also might be thinking about cutting your own wood to heat your house. Well, if you've never done either of these things before, here's some stuff to consider. First of all, heating your house with firewood can mean many different things. For some people, it might mean just kind of lighting a fire on the weekends and kind of warming the house up a little bit on the weekends with a fire. It could mean every evening after you get home from work, maybe you light a fire, kind of help with the heating bills a little bit. And remember, every time you let that wood stove fire go out, it will need to be relit again. And that involves newspapers, matches, lighters, kindling. Or it can also mean 100% of the heat that goes into heating your house comes from firewood. You're not using propane or natural gas. You're not using electric heat. You're just using firewood to heat your house. So it is kind of important to figure out where you're going to fall in that spectrum of heating your house with wood. Because that'll also go in to your decision making of what kind of wood stove that you're going to have. If you're just going to be lighting a fire on the weekends, just to kind of warm the house up and have a little wood heat in the house, maybe a little ambiance, you know, maybe a little atmosphere with that, with that wood stove going, you might want to just have a general wood stove. You might want to have a fireplace. You might want to get a wood stove that actually has like a glass door so you can see the fire as it's burning. And then on the other side of that spectrum, if you want to heat your entire house all winter long with wood, you might want to go with an outdoor wood burner or you might want to go with a larger wood furnace Oftentimes, these modern wood furnaces are going to come with electronic thermostats, automatic dampers, possibly even ductwork that uh, will run to each individual room in your house. So, other than the fact that they are burning wood, they're going to be a lot more like your propane or your natural gas furnaces. Or, maybe you're kind of in the middle of these two extremes kind of more like my situation where I have a little bit smaller house I just have a basic wood stove kind of centrally located in that house and the heat just can kind of radiate from that wood stove and kind of reach out to all the corners of the house and you can heat the entire house with it and of course some other factors that you might want to consider is the size of your house how well insulated it is how often you're going to be using that wood stove the climate you live in. These are all factors that go into the type of wood stove that you might want to get. Another important factor to think about when you're going to be burning wood to heat your house is how much of a participant are you going to be in getting this firewood? Are you just going to be buying all the firewood? You're going to have it delivered. It's going to be all cut, split, and dried and ready to burn. But you know, you're still going to have some interaction because you're going to want to put this firewood somewhere. Are you going to want to have a wood shed, you know, so that wood stays out of the snow and the rain? Or are you just going to cover that big pile of wood with a tarp and just go in and get the firewood out from underneath the tarp every time you need some more? Well, if you're in a very snowy climate, that can get to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So, even if you're just outright buying firewood ready to burn, you still got to consider some of the interaction of storing that firewood, getting that firewood from wherever you store it, into the wood stove, 
So there's still a lot of interaction that goes on, even if you're not actually cutting the firewood yourself. Or are you gonna be going out in the woods, cutting down standing trees, cutting them to size, splitting them, and then bringing them to your property or house, stacking them, putting them away, seasoning them, getting them ready to be burnt. That's kind of the other extreme of obtaining the firewood. Perfect. Now, Perfect. me personally, I have heated my house with firewood for over 22 years. And for the bulk of those 22 years, I have cut all the firewood that was used to heat the house. Now, I live in Michigan's Upper Peninsula where we have some pretty long, cold winters. We usually start burning wood in our wood stove somewhere in October, and oftentimes that goes right through till the month of April. So the length of the firewood burning season is pretty long up here in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. But the good news is I have a pretty small house so obviously it takes less wood to heat a smaller house. And like I said before, I just have a basic wood stove. It's centrally located in the house. There's no duct work, there's no automatic dampers, there's no electric blowers on it, nothing like that. Just a basic wood stove. And the heat from that stove radiates out and kind of can reach to all the corners of the house. Now, in the last maybe five to eight years, we have supplemented the wood heat with a little bit of electric heat. But for those first 12 or 14 years or so, we just used firewood to heat the house. No backup electric heat. In fact, the electric heat registers that we do have in the house, we would shut the breakers right off. So the only heat source that we were using was just that firewood. Now, I do utilize a wood shed to store our wood, and the wood shed holds about two seasons worth of wood, and then every three to four days, you know, in the winter, in the season when we're burning the wood, every three to four days, we'll haul in three to four days worth of firewood and keep it near the wood stove. So that's just another thing to kind of consider as far as where you're storing the wood, Maybe if you have a wood furnace in the basement, maybe a lot of that wood can go right into the basement. If you have an outdoor wood boiler, you could maybe have a wood shed kind of near it, maybe not right next to it, but, but pretty close to your outdoor wood burner. Because if you've never used a wood stove before, if you've never burnt wood on a regular basis like that, these wood stoves need to be fed. Even these larger outdoor wood boilers you might be loading them up once, twice a day. Um, certainly the smaller the stove gets, the more you're gonna be loading it. Um, the, the small basic stove that we have right inside our house, we're probably putting wood in that three to four times a day. So, you know, keep these things in mind when it comes to where you're going to store the firewood and how you're going to get that firewood near the stove and into the stove. Just a quick reminder right here, guys. If you are looking for some bonus outdoors in Michigan's Upper Peninsula content, be sure to check out our Patreon page. I'll leave a link below in the description of this video. Give it a look. It might be something you're interested in. And also keep in mind that wood stoves need to be maintained. Even the most basic wood stove needs the chimney cleaned periodically and it needs the ashes removed periodically. And then as you get into more fancy stoves like an outdoor wood boiler or even a indoor wood furnace, you're adding electronics to it, you're adding more moving mechanical parts, and of course these are more things that need to be maintained. So these are all things to consider even if you have all the wood delivered, cut, split, dried, ready to burn. These are all things that you need to consider. There is going to be some interaction just storing the wood and getting the wood from its storage area into the wood stove. But what if you'd like to cut all your own firewood? Now, if you've never done that before, there's several things that you're gonna to wanna to consider when it comes to that too. 
just like there's different levels when it comes to burning firewood, right? From just a little bit on the weekends to maybe 100% of your house heat, okay? There's also different levels of cutting your own firewood too. If you're just looking to burn a little firewood on the weekends, some people might cut up a few trees that are dead or have fallen down, and that'll be enough firewood to do a little bit of burning on the weekends. Some people will also have firewood delivered. They'll buy firewood, but it might come in eight foot lengths, and then they'll have to cut it to size and split it themselves. Or there's the old fashioned traditional way where you're going out in the woods, you're cutting down standing trees, cutting them all down to size, splitting them yourself, stacking them yourself, letting them dry or season yourself, and then you're burning it. Now, every aspect of using firewood to heat your house is labor intense. But when you start getting into cutting down standing trees, cutting to size, splitting, stacking, drying, all those sorts of things, that becomes very labor intense and it also can become very equipment intense too. Now before we get into some of the equipment involved I'd like to take a quick time out with a word from my one and only sponsor Camaro's Crawlers. Attention outdoor enthusiasts don't forget to stop by Camaro's Crawlers for all your live bait needs. My buddy, Ronnie Camaro, still has the bait shop down in the basement of his parents' house where he lives, and he still has the freshest crawlers, minnows, and grasshoppers when they're in season. And if you're going to be out camping this summer, don't forget that Ronnie Camaro sells and delivers campfire wood. Now, you guys know Ronnie Camaro, right? He only drives Camaros, he has a summer Camaro, he has a winter Camaro. But for $50, he will deliver a Camaro load of firewood right to your campsite. And if you need any help starting those campfires, be sure to pick up a few of these Camaros Crawlers fire starters. These fire starters aren't your run-of-the-mill fire starters that are just a toilet paper roll with some newspapers in them. Each Camaro's Crawler's fire starter is also infused with a piece of birch bark to get those fires started faster. And Ronnie Camaro knows a thing or two about starting fires. I remember all the way back to high school, he was always lighting things on fire and melting things. So you can trust Camaro's Crawler's fire starters to get that fire going. Ronnie Camaro has these on sale all summer long for just five dollars a piece so don't forget to stop by Camaro's crawlers for all your outdoor needs so back to cutting your own firewood well almost for sure you're going to need a chainsaw and you might also want to have a wood splitter too now I do know a lot of people that burn firewood, they cut their own firewood, they have their own chainsaws, but what they do is they accumulate all the pieces that will need to be split, they leave them in a big pile, and then they just go out and they rent a log splitter for a weekend or a week and get all their splitting done in that time period. And you know, another thing to think about when it comes to cutting your own firewood is do you have access to firewood? Do you own property that has good firewood on it? And are you comfortable with cutting a lot of these trees down year after year to heat your house? Do you have a pickup? Do you have a trailer? Do you have both? Because when you cut this firewood, you're going to need to haul it out of the woods somehow too. And when it comes to chainsaws or when it comes to splitters, all this equipment needs gas, it needs oil, it needs sharpening, it needs tune-ups, and trucks need gas, and trailers need new tires, and so on, right? There is a lot of maintenance involved with this equipment that you have to take care of the firewood. People that maybe have never cut firewood before might look into the woods and see all this free fuel 
but there is a certain amount of money and time that goes into getting those trees from the woods to ready to go into your wood stove. Now, for many of the years that we've used firewood to heat our house, I have cut standing trees. But we also had some hunting property cut by loggers, and when the loggers are done, oftentimes they leave behind what is called the tops. And those are essentially the tops of the trees, the larger branches, pretty much the timber that really didn't have a lot of value when it came to bringing them to a paper mill or a sawmill. Oftentimes those things are left behind because they don't have a lot of value in that aspect, but oftentimes tops make excellent firewood. So for many years, I've utilized the tops as the firewood for our house. We also had a utility come through one edge of our property and they bought easement to cut through the edge of our property. And what they did is they left all the good timber stacked and piled in eight foot lengths and much of it was good firewood. So for a few years now, I've been cutting off that pile to heat our house. And that brings me to another very important consideration if you're deciding to cut your own firewood. If you have never used a chainsaw, or you've never cut down a standing tree, or if you've never even cut a tree that's already on the ground, educate yourself in chainsaw safety. And I really can't stress that enough. Chainsaws are inherently dangerous. Chainsaws are great for cutting wood, but they are also great for cutting flesh and bone. Now, as you've seen in the clips throughout this video, I am not always the poster child for chainsaw safety. I'm always trying to improve. Generally, if I'm going to be taking some time and I'm going to be cutting firewood for a while, I do try to put on my personal protective equipment, but I'll admit, I get lazy sometimes. I'm driving out to the deer camp and there's just like one tree maybe laying across the road or one tree in the way or I'm out at my deer blind and there's maybe this one tree that's kind of in the way. A lot of times I will start up the chainsaw and just kind of get it out of there and oftentimes I don't have my personal protective equipment on. Uh, I'm not saying it's right. It's probably a dumb thing to do. I would encourage you again educate yourself on chainsaw safety. Trees that are standing, that are being cut down, are very unpredictable. Even trees as they're laying on the ground can be very unpredictable. So, before you run out and buy a chainsaw and start cutting up your own firewood, please educate yourself on chainsaw safety. Now, even after going through all the work that can go into firewood and all the equipment that you have to have and maintain to do firewood. I do personally find cutting your own firewood and heating your house with firewood to be very rewarding. We also heat our deer camp with firewood and we also have a wood-fired sauna at both locations. Some people believe that firewood heat is twice as good as other forms of heat because you get the heat from burning the wood and you also get the heat from cutting, splitting, and stacking the firewood. And I guess there is a little truth to that. Like I said earlier, I do find it quite rewarding to cut my own firewood for all these locations and all these uses. Okay guys, well, there's a few things to think about if you're considering burning or cutting your own firewood. Shark. Very good. So guys, if you're interested in more videos about getting out and enjoying the great outdoors of Michigan's Upper Peninsula, be sure to check out the entire channel. And if you enjoy what you see, please consider liking and subscribing. And for bonus content, be sure to check out our Patreon page. A link to this page can be found in the description of this video. And also guys, remember to hunt, fish, 
laugh, repeat. Thanks for watching and God bless.